Kemp, you're still on mute. So if you see the little mic in the bottom left hand corner. Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there I, I counted you, but I was like, all right. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, proof of giving public meeting notice, Eric. Yeah, notices were posted at both schools, sent to the village of Dickieville and Cedar City City Hall, as well as members of the media on Tuesday, May 19th. Okay. Um, do we have any public recognition? Did either of you sign in to speak? No, we don't have anybody here. All right. Item four is the board reorganization. Uh, um, every uh, May following the April election, we have to reorganize for officers of the board. And uh, at this time, I'm going to appoint uh, Megan, if she would, as the temporary clerk to conduct the elections. So Megan, you're gonna go ahead and ask for um, the uh, officers as stated. And board members, remember, if you want to make a nomination for a position, make sure you're unmuted. All right. First, uh, is there a motion uh, for to appoint a board president? I would move to appoint Gary Andrews to serve as Cuba City Board of Education president. Is there a second? I would, I would second that. All right. And Andrews, I assume, uh, abstain. Uh, I, I think I think Megan, you just need to ask. I believe if there are any other nominations, and then are there any other nominations? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, do you? I'll do, you want to just, do, do you want to just do voice votes tonight, or do you want me to go through person by person? What have you like guys, all in what favor? Have you, what have you All opposed? Done? Would that move us through faster? I think, or? I think you We've need to do <laughs> voice votes. Voice votes. Or uh, a roll call vote. Yeah, I think you need to do voice votes for these. Roll call. That's okay. how it's on the uh, okay. agenda. You have to call. Okay. All right. So Andrews is abstain. Bowden. Yes. Collins. Yes. Henderman. Yes. Cole. Yes. Raider. Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried. Congratulations, Gary. Thank you. Are there any motions for vice president? Before taking any, um, I have a comment. Uh, I had asked Dan some time ago if he would consider that, and then Chuck called me yesterday stating he's interested in it. So at least the board knows that information as you now can proceed uh, to address Megan's question. Okay. Um, so is there, are there any motions for vice president? Nominations for vice president. Just in case if everybody's wondering what does the vice president do um, in the previous three years that I've been here anyway, Terry has been the vice president. And really the only time that something comes up is if Gary is unavailable. Um, if he's out of state seeing one, or out of country seeing one of his kids or something like that, and I, I need to run something by the board president, I would call the vice president at that time. I will make the motion um, for Dan Bowden as vice president. I'll second. I'll second. Are there any other nominations? All right, hearing, okay, hearing none. Um, sorry. <laughs> so uh, is there, can I just use that as the motion or then do I have to ask again for a motion to approve him as? I think everybody knows what, okay. Uh, okay. what it is we're voting on. Sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, Andrews. Yes. Yeah. All right, Bowden is abstain. Collins. Yes. Hinderman. Yes. Cole. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White. 
Yes. Motion carried. Congratulations, Dan. Congratulations, Dan. Thank you. Congratulations. So uh, now accepting nominations for treasurer of the school board. I would nominate Chuck Cole to serve as to the city board of education treasurer. I will second that. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Collins. Yes. Henderman. Yes. Paul. Uh, abstain. Schrader. Yes. White. Yes. Bowden carried. Congratulations, Chuck. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Okay. Is there a nomination for board clerk? I'd like to nominate Megan Henderman. I'll do the same. Thank you. Board of Education. <laughs> I'll second. I will second it. All right. I will I'm not sure anybody else wants that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Schrader. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Henderman. Abstain. Poll. Yes. Schrader? Yes. White? Motion carried. Alrighty. I think I can take over now, Megan, for the rest of the meeting. Thank you for doing uh, Thank you, that reorganization. Um, item B is appoint member to the CISA board who also serve as the CISA 3 convention representative. I have served in that role in the past and we would accept it if somebody wants to move. I will move to appoint Gary Andrews to serve on the CISA 3 board if there is an opening for the 2019-20 school year. I'll second. All right. Andrews, abstain, voted? Yes. Collins? Yes. Henderman, yes. Cole? Yes. Schrader? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, C set the time of meetings by board policy. It's currently the third Wednesday of each month unless the board act, takes action to the contrary. And it's at generally 6.30. Uh, so if is there any questions or desire to change it? I think probably the earliest time you'd ever want to change it would be 6 o'clock because you could still have a 5 o'clock committee meeting before that. Um, 6.30 is certainly fine with me, but it really kind of depends on your availability. Is 6, 6.30 or 7 better for this board? Any comments? I kind of like it at 6.30 because if we do it on 5.30 meeting, then it's uh, easy for me to get here then. I like 6.30. Okay. I'll make a motion. All right. All right. That was made by Don. You got a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Andrews? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Collins? Yes. Henderman? Yes. Cole? Yes. Schrader? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried. Item D, designate official depositories. Um, currently we use uh, um, all of those listed in the motion. Are there any questions or concerns about using any of those? And American Bank and Trust is now Midwest one. So when we read through the motion, that's how we uh, just cross that out. Gotcha, yep. Hearing none, would somebody move? Changing it to Midwest One. Okay. I will move to designate Mom City Bank of Cuba City, Midwest One, and Trust of Midwest One of Cuba City, Royal Bank of Dickieville, Citizens Bank of Dickieville, as the official depositories of the school district of Cuba City. 
Is there a second? I will second. Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Collins. Yes. Enderman. Yes. Cole. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White. Yes. Motion carried. All right. Item E, and designate the official newspaper. Um, we only have one choice, I guess. Uh, um, at this point, is there any concerns with the Tri-County Press? Otherwise, would someone move? I'll move to designate the Tri-County Press as the official newspaper of the school district of Cuba City. Is there a second? Second. All right, Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Collins. Yes. Henderman. Yes. Cole. Yes. Schrader. Yes. And White. Yes. Motion carried. Alrighty. Item F is the committee membership. And uh, at this point, uh, um, I think everybody has uh, um, told me what they wanted. But I will run through them quick. But Billing and Grounds, the chair is Dan Bowden with Chuck Paul and Brad Collins. Does that sound good? Dan, chair or vice chair? I'm sorry, budget and finance. I'm sorry, I didn't read that right. Budget and finance. Okay. Dan Bowden, chair with Chuck and Brad. Let me try that again. That's good. And Building and Grounds is Chuck with chair and Don and Brad. Curriculum, instruction and assessment is Megan with chair, Sarah and Don. Communications, review, strategic planning, Dan the chair with Sarah and Megan. Personnel with myself as chair, Dan and Don. Policy, Megan is chair with Sarah and Brad. And Votech, Dan is chair with myself and Chuck. And the Southwest representative um, is me and Dan Bowden is a WASB rep and the foundation board is Chuck and Dan. Any questions or concerns with that? Hearing none, thank you everybody for uh, putting in for that. I will move to approve the Kansas City Board of Education Committee assignments as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. I'm going to give it to Sarah. There we go. All right. Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Collins. Yes. Henderman. Yes. Cole. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White. Yes. Motion carried. Item five is the consideration of the consent agenda. Um, normally, what we do is we put a bunch of items under here um, that generally do not require uh, questions. So what I do is I'll ask, are there any items A through E that the board wants pulled for further discussion as if I hear none, then the motion is to approve all those items A through I that you see in the agenda. All right, hearing none, would somebody move? I'll move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? I will second. Andrews? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Collins? Yes. Henderman, yes. Cole? Yes. Schrader? Yes. Uh, White? Yes. Motion carried. All right, thank you. The next one is the administrative reports. Uh, um, at this point, did anybody have a chance to look at any of those or they're all there under each of the different uh, tabs to uh, be able to read. The only 
concern I have is, is that for some reason I'm not able to get into the Google Docs um, to access them. Am I the only one having that issue? Oh, I have it also. I can get in it. Gary, you do have a one a Gmail address. I wonder if you use your Gmail address, you'll have access to all the Google documents, but if you're in your iCloud, that might be why you're not able to bring it up. Can I try to switch accounts this morning before I let you know I didn't have that information or couldn't get in, and I wasn't able to, to switch accounts, so I, I, I need, uh, obviously, some uh, technical help. Okay. I'll send those as PDFs to you and Chuck. All right. Those will work there. Thanks for this. No, thank you. All right. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Brad. You, you, you Brad. cut out a lot, Brad. Can you repeat, Brad? Sorry. I, yep. I said I changed mine so that the link um, now allows anyone with a link to access it. Were there any questions, board? Yeah. I had no questions, but I wanted to thank the team again for taking the time to write those all out. I know it's nice to hear the verbal report sometimes and interact with you guys, but I appreciate you taking the time to think through all that. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else? Otherwise, we'll, we'll just move on unless there's questions or you want to hear anything from uh, those that are in attendance from the administrative team. Mm -hmm. All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item seven, the public hearing on a request for DPI wa waiver pursuant to Wisconsin statute 118.38 due to the COVID-19 public health emergency for instructional hours. So, Aaron, go ahead. Yep, so what we are doing is we're gonna apply for this waiver and um, initially, when we started this process, um, we were so far over, I believe 12 or 13 days over at the elementary school that we thought, okay, if we're a few days off at the high school, we can use digital learning and we won't have to <coughs> apply for a waiver. Well, because our for the most part, six through 12th graders log on to Schoology every day. There's a track of who logged in for digital learning days. We didn't. We don't have that for the elementary. Although some school or some teachers are using Schoology, it's not required because we we didn't think that we would have more than 12 days. So um, because of this, we can't guarantee that the, all those kids have logged on. So we're going to be applying for the waiver. And the state has said whoever applies for the waiver is going to get it but we have to hold a public hearing. So at this time, if anyone in the audience would like to say their piece before we vote on um, a waiver for instructional minutes, now is time for the three of you. Actually two, because you don't live within the district, do you? I don't so it's only two. And you don't either. <laughs> I know Julie does, because she lives across the street from me. I got nothing. Uh, so, we're, so we're good. Nobody here has anything to say. So, um, so okay. we, we can move on and, and make that motion. Are there any questions for on that? No. no, go ahead and move then, somebody, please. I'll move to approve move. the waiver for instructional minutes to the DPI as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Colin. Oh, that's not. Yes. Colin. Henderman. Yes. Yes. Paul. Yes. There we go. Schrader. Yes. White. Yes. Motion carried. Hold on. Megan, I'll try not to split those on I, two pages again. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's, and, and it's okay. I was having some weird feedback issues, so I was like, I think that was, I think they said yes, but it's lagging on my end, so I apologize. I will tell you though, a lot Everybody of the elementary teachers are using Schoology. Discussion on a lot of them are using goal Schoology. Number one the elementary the year long goal setting plan uh, for the Board of Education. Aaron? 
Yep, we've kind of had a pause now with our goal setting since COVID-19 has struck. Uh, we do have a subcommittee that's called Strategic Planning and Communication. And since we've done a, a, about a year's worth of work um, right now, and, and we're really just on our top couple priorities, um, I'm recommending at this time that we work with that Communications and Strategic Planning Committee to finalize those last few pieces and then come back with you. And, um, and part of that will be because we do have almost a new board. You know, two out of our seven people are, are newer to that process, haven't been with us for that whole year. So, um, you know, like to say this is our plan for the next so many years, whether that's two or three, but then schedule out um, our next goal setting and strategic planning committee so that we have uh, at this date, we're gonna, we're gonna start up this again whether that's with the full board or the communications committee meeting, that's something that we can discuss. But that's the uh, direction I'd like to go with that. We've, we spent most of our time on goal number one. We did set five goals, but we just had conversation around one. That one goal did have about 28 different pieces in it, and that's what we're gonna try to figure out is how we make those actionable items in the smart goal process. Can you, for those, especially Brad, can you say what goal one was, Aaron? Yep, goal one was to provide opportunities for success for our students in academics, arts, and co-curriculars or athletics. So opportunities for success is different than opportunities, so that kind of broke it into some pieces. And then in each of those three pieces that are, um, are represented in our shield, the Cuba City Shield, which is a logo for our school, um, that's the academics, the arts, and the co-curricular. So that's how we picked that, as that's been our shield for about the last 30 years or so. Um, and I like Aaron's suggestion to do it this way because at this point we don't know when we'd be able to get Jamie Nutter back here from CISA 3 and or I guess meet in person to continue this. So rather than just let it, uh, you know, say dormant, I, I guess I'd like to see uh, this committee work on that. Is that all right, committee? I think it's a good idea, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Hey, if, are there any other questions regarding that? All right, item nine, new business. Approve the 2021 health insurance plan with WEA. Yep. Aaron spelled it out here, but uh, um, Aaron, anything you want to say? I mean, he went over it um, with the uh, uh, with me, and uh, obviously at this point, I think that uh, he also went over it with the uh, um, compensation committee, compensation committee, personnel committee, and and we're recommending this. Yep, and uh, it's about a $30,000 savings for a plan that we feel is a much better plan that provides a lot better options and flexibility for all of our staff to utilize. Uh, to, we did get from WEA today, Heather and I received about a 27 minute video that if this is approved, we'll send out to staff tomorrow. It's from WEA comparing our current health plan with sports to the new plan with WEA. Um, so they have a half an hour video that they're ready to share with staff tomorrow. And then we'd like to, to plan um, a question and answer format uh, where, where teachers can submit their questions and then we'll send those to WA for answers. And then the last week of school, have them available for two hours like in a Zoom or if, uh, they're not gonna be here. So in a Zoom type meeting uh, where people do have specific questions they can ask. This is effective July 1, correct? Yes. Any questions, board? Hmm. All right, silence with somebody move. I'll make a motion to approve that health plan for 2021 as presented. Is, is there a second? Motion? I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I will second. All right, thank you. Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Collins. Yes. Henderman. Yes. Cole. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White. Yes. Motion carries. Item B is approved the renewal of the 2021 <coughs> dental insurance plan with Delta Dental. Um, 
we've used them and uh, it's a zero increase so it was a pretty tough choice uh, to uh, for Aaron to say we should do it again so are there any questions hearing none would somebody move I'll move to approve the renewal of Delta Dental Insurance Plan as presented. Is there a second? Andrews? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Callan? Yes. Hinderman? Yes. Cole? Yes. Schrader? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried. Item C, approve the renewal of the 2021 and life insurance. Again, a uh, 0% increase. Uh, um, this is through Tricor, correct, Aaron? Or there Tricor is a broker, so it's Northwest Insurance. That's what it's through. And they're actually okay. looking into a, a short-term right. disability. Are there? Uh, they're, they're, we asked them, our, the personnel committee meeting asked, um, can we offer short-term disability? Um, right now, Teachers are allowed to bank up to 60 days. So when I talked with Brent Straka, he said uh, it's 90 calendar days for our employment. So that would roughly mean 62 or 63 school days roughly. Um, so that's how that 60 day number came up. That's how that was determined. But for um, short term disability, they are looking into some options that they'll share with us. Um, and uh, short term disability is just, uh, you know, we're thinking of some of our younger teachers and if they don't have a lot of accumulated sick day, they would, there's a gap there if something does happen to them. And so we're just looking into how we can, can help our younger staff with that gap. We don't have any numbers yet, but they are looking into it. If there are no questions, would somebody move for the long-term disability? I move to approve the renewal of the long-term disability with life insurance as presented. Is there second. a second? Andrews? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Collin? Yes. Henderman? Yes. Cole? Yes. Schrader? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried. Aaron, thank you to you, Heather, administrative team, whoever uh, worked on those uh, um, contracts, especially the one for the health insurance. Uh, um, a great, a great uh, job. Yeah, the compensation committee meeting did, did a great job too, providing a lot of information for us, a lot of perspective and um, filling out surveys and helping us know what's really important to staff. And, and luckily the numbers were, were really good this year. Some years they won't be like that, but this year the numbers were good. Yep, thank you. Item D is approved the 2021 contract with CESA 3. Um, is there anyone that doesn't know what CESA does for us or uh, has any questions? And as uh, Aaron said, uh, um, we, in essence, uh, um, lost Rob Callahan to Lancaster, um, but he has a great uh, plan B here. So uh, if there are no questions, would somebody move? Make a motion to approve a CESA 3 contract for 2021. Is there a second? I'll second. Andrews? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Collins? Yes. Henderman? Yes. Cole? Yes. Schrader? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried. All right, thanks, Maggie. Uh, I have IE draft performance for the class of 2020. Aaron? Yep, so that's a list of all the seniors, and uh, before we have the actual graduation ceremony, uh, Mrs. Olson will double check and make sure that every one of those uh, people on that list have met as of today. They have met all requirements, but we do not have final fourth quarter grade or second semester grades yet, so that's how we'll double check that. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, 
to check out the big sign exiting Cuba City towards Platteville. And there's also one entering by Dickeyville at Sunset Lane and in Keeler by across from the, the post office. We have some signs celebrating the class of 2020 because we can't do a lot of celebrating them here in the school. So and we can thank Julie Joel for getting the pictures and putting them into that format so we could highlight them that way. That poster was actually edited and photoshopped together by Julie, who's here today. So if you all want to be, I'll thank you. That, that's okay. Uh, but she did that wonderful work and has done a lot um, with the photography. She, she actually drove to everybody's house and got pictures of them in their cap and gown and has gone above and beyond. So Julie, on behalf of everybody who's, who's here, thank you very much. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. And then we will let you yes, thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Ellie wanted me to say the people who need to sign the diplomas, she will bring those to you. In the very near future. All right, thank you. I'm, what, I'm, was there anything else, Ellie? I put here. Nope, nope that's it. Okay. I will move on to the Mary? Yes. I just got one question. Uh, we have some students that are going to be going into the service. Will they be here for the graduation ceremony or will they get there earlier? Good question. Um, we, when we for sure know exactly what we're going to do, we will reach out to those students. I do know um, we have talked to the recruiters and they were able to adjust the dates if they choose to stay for our ceremony, which we do have at the end of July. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, but we have looked into that because, yeah, to try to help meet the needs of everybody. Um, and remember, we, we put out our, our calendar based on the Badger Bounce Back program, which, if you're following the news and the uh, Supreme Court, um, <laughs> that doesn't really mean anything anymore. It is It has a lot of good suggestions in there. We'll continue to use oh. that. So, um, you know, Ellie has, has talked about even... You know, do we have to keep that date? We do not have to keep that date. And um, I know that's something she does not want our two students who are going to the military to miss out on anything. So um, after after June 30th, we'll be likely to, to have events, but as far as how many people can be there, we still don't know, and we won't know until we get closer to that date. So graduation is still what date? The 30th or 31st of July. As of right now, July 30th or 31st. Okay. That could possibly change. Yes. One more question. One more question. Um, you know, for our graduation ceremony, board members in the past have assisted, and um, looking at everyone, wondering if Chuck and Barry would like to be a part of that. If we get to that point or whatever, we decide what path we feel is the safest for this adventure. I guess I just want to um, see if Barry and Chuck. Would you like to be part of that? And if anybody else is interested at this point, um, that is my question for the group. Yes, I work for that too, Francis. Yep, and I knew that, so we wanted to make sure Chuck was included. But, all right, yeah. think if you have any thoughts. Sounds good. Thank you. I, I would like to be involved, yep. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Otherwise, I will continue with my motion to approve the 2020 graduate diplomas as presented. I'll second. Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Dan, you're, you're muted, but mm -hmm. I saw you say yes. Yes. <laughs> Colin. Yes. Henderman, yes. Cole. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White. Yes. Motion carried. You read Lex too, huh? <laughs> I do it all. <laughs> I know. Uh, we know that. Of the PA, PA system upgrades at the elementary and the bell system. At the middle school, um, Chuck, anything you want to say about that? No, well, I would thank uh, Aaron for what he's done. You know, and it, it's a good savings for us, so I would appreciate it being approved. 
Yeah, that went through buildings and grounds what was it, last week or last week or two weeks ago. Uh, some of these items went through buildings and grounds. Are there any questions, board? All right, hearing none, would somebody move? I'll move to approve the upgrade to the elementary school VA and middle school bell system as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Callan. Yes. Henderman. Yes. Paul. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried. All righty. Item G, approve the purchase of replacement building and grounds ATV. Uh, Chapter Aaron, any comment? Yep, our, our 1998 okay. Gator um, is, is not always working the way we want to, so we want, this is something that we've been talking about for about the last two years. Um, so we've got bids from Nick's Power, uh, Power Sports in Dickeyville and Midwest Motorsports in Keeler. We will be purchasing from one of those two places. Um, we're really kind of waiting until the 2021s come out, which we think will be in, in June. Um, and both have said when the 21s come out, the 20s will have, a, will have some type of discount. So we're, we're waiting to get the best price on one of those. But we hope that the next one we get can last another 22 years as well. Okay. Are there any questions, board? Otherwise, would somebody move, please? I'll move to approve the purchase of the replacement buildings and grounds ATV as presented. Is there a second? I will second. Andrews? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Collins? Yes. Henderman? Yes. Paul? Yes. Schrader? Yes. White? Yes. Motion carried. Item H, approve the purchase of a replacement floor scrubber. Aaron or Chuck? Go ahead, Aaron. This one will be from Clean Time Rider. Um, they brought it in and demoed it with our custodial staff, uh, brought in a couple different ones to look at, and um, picked the one that they wanted. This one was approved by Buildings and Grounds as well. Any questions, board? Would somebody move? I'll move to approve the purchase of a replacement floor scrubber as presented. Second. Is there a second? Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Yes. Collins. Yes. Henderman, yes. Paul. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White. Yes. Motion carried. Alrighty, item I approve Neola policy updates. Volume 29, number one. And my oh my, you must have been busy. <laughs> well, it's what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aaron, I can let you speak to it, but. For the majority of these, they were small wording changes, legality recommendations. Um, most of the changes were fairly minor, but if there were any you wanted to call in particular. Yeah, th there's only a couple um, that re would require me to reach out to staff and like, and they were the, ad the admin team. Like, okay, this one, now it says we have to do it this way. We've never done something like this, so we've got to do that. But that was one policy out of the full list. Most of them were, were um, verbiage changes and changing from one word to another. Um, and um, some of them were um, based on court rule, ruling, but didn't really change our practice. Our policy words haven't changed, but that's how we've been doing things anyway. So the only one that was added late was um, due to the COVID-19 and they, it came out the day after our policy committee meeting. Um, and it was for time and effort reporting and um, it basically said because of all these different things and the way people are reporting time during the COVID-19, you have to do it this way. 
that was the way, way that Heather was doing it already, so it didn't require us to have any changes, but it is now in policy. Any questions, board? Thank you, policy committee. Um, I will move to approve the NEOLA policy updates, volume 29, number one, as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Andrew. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Fallon. Yes. Heiderman, yes. Pohl. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White. Yes. Motion carried. Personnel uh, approved the hiring of new Cuba City High School counselor, Raya Adler. Aaron? Yep, Ms. Olson, you want to come over and introduce Raya? Yes, I'd love to. Can stand up there too, there's a camera right there. No, I don't think <laughs> We were excited she got to wear a dress today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> got out of her pajamas? I did, I did. <laughs> yeah, so I am very excited to introduce all of you to Raya Adler. Raya, if you want to wave and say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Raya is. We are recommending Raya for our high school counselor position, and she comes to us uh, with her schooling through UW Oshkosh. She interned um, at Manassa as well as Cuba City. So she worked with Jennifer Shep in the middle school and elementary school here for us. And she also did some practicum work in Fond du Lac. So we're looking forward to some of her ideas and things that she learned um, in those other districts and other schools. But uh, we're really looking forward to her positive energy and um, what she's going to bring to our district. So um, yeah, so. Welcome, Raya. We're glad you're here tonight, that everybody can see who you are, and let's take a vote. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ellie. All righty. Um, are there any questions? Otherwise, there is a motion. I would move to approve the hiring of new Cuba City High School counselor, Raya Adler. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Collin. Yes. Hinderman. Yes. Pohl. Yes. Schrader. Yes. White. Motion carried. All right. Thank you. Welcome, Raya. Congratulations, Raya. Welcome to Cuba City. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Item B is approved the hiring of new Cuba City Elementary School physical education teacher, Rebecca Garrison. Brad? Uh, first of all, congratulations, Raya. Um, and then I just want to uh, take a moment and recommend uh, Rebecca for the position as elementary PE teacher. It was really unusual conducting a interview process virtually, um, having them involved in multiple Zoom meetings. Uh, but I think whether you do it virtually or in person, sometimes the cream just rises to the top. And I think we have that in, in Rebecca. So I'm really excited about the energy and excitement that she brings to our school district. Really happy. I bet that was interesting, uh, where you can't uh, look them in the eye, per se, uh, like you uh, normally would. Well, you could look them in the eye, but you couldn't read body language real well. Like, right now, I'm not standing up because you don't need to see that I have shorts on and stuff, you know, <laughs> everything else. Uh, so it's, uh, it, was, it was a different environment, but uh, Rebecca did an outstanding job and was extremely professional uh, through the whole process. Any questions for it? Thank you, Brad. Otherwise, there's a motion. I'll move to approve the hiring of new Cuba City Elementary Physical Education teacher Rebecca Garrison as presented. Is there a second? Hey. I'll second. Okay. Andrews. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Collin. Yes. Henderman. Yes. Cole. Yes. Schrader? 
Yeah. Yeah. White. Yeah. Motion carries. Congratulations, Rebecca. Welcome to Cuba City. Welcome aboard. Is Rebecca with us too? On her? Yep. Yep, Rebecca, you want to wave to everybody? There you go. Hello, nice to meet you all. Thank you so much. I'm excited to join this team. Welcome. Thank you, Rebecca. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Cuba City. Item C is approved string head coach and assistant coach stipends for 2020. Uh, this went to the um, personnel committee as well, and we are recommending it. But Aaron, you want to make any comments there? Yep. So what we did is, um, from the last board meeting when we had a discussion, um, and this is in your board packet, it's got different columns. So um, you'll see what uh, sport they're in, whether it's high school or middle school, the coach name, the position, uh, the salary that they're able to get as, as a coach. Um, and then uh, the reason we tabled it is we weren't sure, you know, some people put in a lot of hours, some didn't. So we did look at hours currently put in. So if you look at your form, there's a green, green column there that says hours put in currently, and they range from 10% or 5% to 10% to 25%, that's kind of the range. Um, also has their year's experience. But what we found in uh, my WSB workshop, um, or the, the weekly district administrator uh, Zoom meeting that we have, is that um, coaches qualified uh, under unemployment because those are lost wages that they were counting on. And so we don't have unemployment insurance, so we would pay dollar for dollar. So the minimum that we would pay is 60% to all those people that applied for unemployment. And so that 60% comes to about, just for the spring coaches we have here, and this is middle school and high school, comes to about 17,442. So if they went through and did the unemployment, that's what that would be. Um, we talked about at the, at the personnel, do we give them 75%, which is a little bit above 60% because our coaches do a, um, a, a good job and we don't want to have to have them go through all that unemployment paperwork. But um, what we found out is if we pay them 75%, and this is what I found out why a lot of administrators are just paying the full amount. If we pay them 75%, they still can apply for unemployment. So the rema remaining 25% of that and we would be paying them that 60%. So even if we did give 75% um, and they applied for unemployment, it would cost us about $26,162. Where if we just pay everybody the full amount that they were counting on getting, it would be $29,070. So um, at this point, um, I'm recommending that we pay all of our, our employees 100% um, for that. I know last time we had the discussion, we were talking about it's hard, I'm getting some feedback here. Um, it was hard with the bus company um, not paying that, but looking at paying our coaches. I will remind everybody that our coaches are our employees and we have done a, a really good job of trying to make sure that we take care of all of our employees. Um, and the bus company, are, they are contractors and they're valued contractors, but um, they have, they have a, a business structure as well that hopefully somebody is looking out for those employees. So I, I understand that perspective, but I also want to let us know that, that I've always felt the board wants us to take care of our employees. So my recommendation is uh, that 100% that we have in the budget, uh, but I'm, I'm open to, to hearing any or answering or fielding any questions from you guys. And Mr. Holzmer is here also if you had any questions for our athletic director. Aaron, you had noted to me which I guess I wasn't clear on was the um, unemployment insurance and how, and could you just speak briefly to that? Yep, so we pay every dollar of unemployment. So if anybody is on unemployment, it's roughly about 60%, is that right, Heather? She's got to unmute. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, like in this, a lot of businesses will have unemployment insurance that they pay into every month in case they have to lay someone off. If that's covered by the insurance company. Schools don't do that because we don't use unemployment often, and this is an unusual circumstance. So if somebody qualifies for $655 of unemployment, we pay all.